We were miserable. Uh, I was obsessed with bands uh, from the UK, so everything that I sang was like this. And um, so, like, uh, anybody in here have the album The Answers by Blue October? Yes. Yeah? Okay, well, pop that bitch in on the way home, right? And there's this song called Tomorrow on it, and it's. I can't listen to it because it's dreadful. I, I, Tomorrow, I'm gonna find a way to die. It's like I'm trying to be from England or something and it's just horrible. Um, so anyway, I was in this band called The Last Wish and we were playing a show in Houston, Texas, uh, where I'm from, 16 years old. And uh, I came up to the leader of the band, Greg, and um, I said, hey man, do you mind if I, after the show is over, if I come up and play this song that I've written? And, uh, and he was like, of course, you showboating motherfucker. <laughs> because I had like this ego the size of this stage when I was 16. Um, when I was 16. Um, <laughs> oh, shut up. Uh, and so uh, he said, of course, go ahead. And so I sat up there after the, the, after the band played, and I played this song, and after I played it, the whole audience was like, quiet. And their mouths were like, <laughs> And I thought in my head, I just blew them the fuck away. <laughs> like, I'm so good, look at their faces. <laughs> that, that was me, that's what I thought. So uh, on my way home that night, I'm on this natural high thinking, wow. I just blew them so away. And um, when you're 16 years old you, and you're in a band, you really don't run shit. Your parents still do, right? Because you're 16. So you can think you do all you want. But the next morning, my parents get this call from the other parents in the band. And they want to hold a parents meeting. So what do I think? I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> We're going to get signed, right? We're going to get a big record label. They're going to put all their money together that they've saved for their children's. And they're going to put it all towards me. And their kids. But me. And um, so my parents were like, okay, let's go to this meeting. So uh, we show up to this meeting. And we lived like in a kind of a poor neighborhood, right? Uh, and this meeting was held in this big mansion. Like, well, I call it a mansion because it had two stories. Um, but we walked through this big door, and it was slow motion, and I walk in, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm here, what, what, and we sit down in this big circle, and I remember uh, my dad, my mom was right here, my dad was right here, and my mom, she's a sweet little lady, and, uh, and I, remember, I remember Greg's dad, because he had this fucked up beard, it was like in patches. Like one right here, one right there. And I remember it, it was awful. Um, but I remember because he said, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Like it was fucking court or something, you know? And, uh, and my parents were like, okay. And he said, the reason we're all here is because we're worried about the lead singer. <laughs> we don't like what he sang about last night. We don't like what he represents. We don't want our kids involved in this. So I was like, so we're not gonna get signed? <laughs> what does this mean? And my dad looked at me like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> because he wasn't at the show, not, nor was my mom, right? So my mom's a sweet little Christian lady, right? She's sitting over there all quiet and reserved. And, um, <laughs> And she hears this, and the parents are staring right at her, right? And she's getting a little, a little anxious, and she starts getting real red. And I remember everything went slow motion. And my mom looked around. And she grabbed the nicest lamp she could find, and she was like, fuck your lamp! Boom! <laughs> Glass everywhere. My dad stood up, and he's like, fuck y'all! We're out of here! It didn't happen that way at all, actually. <laughs> I just always like to think that it happens that way, because it would be so cool if my mom threw the lamp across the room. 
And my dad was like, fuck you yeah. No, I actually leaned forward and I said, uh, I think it's probably time that we go. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take these songs that you're so scared of, and I'm going to start a little band called Blue October. And um, so I did. And on the way home that night, I was sitting there looking at my mom and my dad, the back of their heads, in our little car, and I'm thinking, wow, if I did all of that from one song, like, the sky's the limit, you know? But then I also started thinking, it was very poignant, because I thought to myself, that was the last time I was going to let anybody tell me what I could and could not say in the song. So from there on, when I was 16 years old, from there on, it was just open for anything to write about. And it was so beautiful, you know, just that freedom. So we get home, we pull up in our driveway, my mom goes in, she hangs up her purse, she hangs up her jacket, she sits on the couch, crosses her little legs, puts the blanket over, and she looks at me and she goes, well, Justin, let me hear this song. <laughs> and I look at her and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm about to blow you away. Sit down. So she sits down, little blanket, and then I sit Indian style <laughs> on the floor, and I said, here we go, Mom. So 16 years old, I play her this. <laughs> <laughs> 